today is August 8, 2023, and um, this is a part two for a response based on the Sabbath day video that I did yesterday. And because we know that the comments here on TikTok are not the greatest, they don't stay in order, and they are also only limited with certain characters, I felt like I needed to do another video to explain um, more. And um, this woman right here, she is a lunar Sabbatarian, and these are scriptures that she provided an argument to try and support her belief in the false doctrine of the lunar Sabbath. So I'm going to take a look at each one of these um, scriptures that she's posted, and uh, we'll discuss it, and I'll show you how they do not support her argument or her belief in the false doctrine of the lunar Sabbath. So Psalm 104 this one says it very clearly that he appointed the moon. Yahuwah appointed the moon for seasons. Seasons. Meaning, um, you know, that's when we start the months. Yes. But that's also how we tracked the Moedim, the holy feasts. And I know a lot of people say holy feast days, but I'm going to stay away from the term days because that's kind of where the confusion lies. They are the holy feasts because the holy feast will fall on different days based upon when the new moon begins a new month. Okay, that does not mean it starts the calendar over again. Doesn't mean it doesn't start. It starts month over again. Because if that were the case, there would be some months that only have 27 days and some months that have almost 32 days. So we cannot go by that because that even goes against what is said in the book of Enoch. Um, but he appointed the moon for seasons. Okay. Seasons to mark the feasts, the Moedim, the holy feast of Yahuwah. Um, Isaiah 66. Um, and it shall come to pass from that, that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith Yahuwah. Well, there's one little word in here that is what people get tripped up on. It's reading comprehension skills and lack of discernment. Um, the new moon is connected to the Sabbath by the word and. It is a conjunction. However, when you understand basic English and grammar, and is only a conjunction that connects two different ideas. Here we go. It's used to connect words of the same part of speech, clauses, or sentences, and they are to be taken jointly. However, they are not the same. I will say this, to put it in context, what we're talking about as far as a calendar. We have days of the week, weeks of the month, months in a year. We have years in a decade, and so on and so forth, right? That does not mean a decade is one year, <laughs> That does not mean a month is one week or a, a week is one day. They're all different things. But that does not mean that that's what they are, that they are the same thing. Okay, that does not mean that they are the same thing. So no, the new moon does not dictate the Sabbath. As I said in my last video yesterday, Father Yahuwah established the weekly Sabbath before he created the earth and he marked the days of creation based on his weekly schedule, his weekly calendar he'd already set because it said that the angels and Yahuwah keep the weekly Sabbath in heaven before it was given to man. That was where his time was set. Okay. Here's another one in Jubilee 6, 26, and she, she gave quite a few passages, a long passage on this one. I'm going to hit just a few points to, for brevity of time. Um, okay, and on the new moon of the fourth month, the mouths of the depths of the abyss were beneath were closed, and on the new moon of the seventh month, all the mouths of the abyss of the earth were open. So this is basically talking about Noah's experience through the flood, and when it happened, certain things happened. On the new moon, on the new moon, on the new moon, but that does not mean that it was the first day of the 10th month. Okay? That is not what it meant. It's a new moon of the 10th month. And as we know, our new moons come on like the 14th or the 15th day. That's what we've been seeing in this last year. 
Um, sometimes it's as light as 28, like July. But um, so, but you also notice too, he ordained, ordained for them as feasts. Okay. On this account, he ordained for them as feasts. New moons are attached to feasts. As feasts. It's not and, it's as. As. Okay. Think about what you learned in school, reading comprehension. Um, and all the children of Israel will forget and will not find the path of the, of the years and will forget the new moons and seasons and Sabbaths. Again, remember what I said about the days of the week, weeks of the month, month of the year, right? Years of a decade. These are all things that are related, but they are not the same things. All right. And that's why the lunar Sabbatarians have fulfilled this prophecy that they will go wrong as to all the order of the years. There you go. Um, uh, Jubilee 7 verse 2. Okay. This is a chronology of the events after Noah um, and his family have been able to get back on the earth after the flood. And it's really interesting how this is just the chronology. It's just like on the first day of the first month of the third, you know, third year or whatever. It, this is just when it happened to fall. The first day of the new moon of the first month. That means that, um, let me describe it this way. So we'll do it in the mark of time. We know we have seconds, a hand for seconds, a hand for minutes, and a hand for hours. Now, you know that in a 24-hour period of time, there's going to be a time where the second hand lines up with the minute hand, which lines up with the hour hand. So all you see is like one line on one number. That's all you're going to see. That does happen. And that does happen in the way Father has set up his calendars. So this is how this happened. It was just the first day on the new month of the first month is when he was able to um, put it in a vessel. Okay, we're, we're, we're going to read through this and you can go through and read Jubilee 7 itself as well in context. But like I said, I'm trying to keep it brief just because I am short on time today as well. Um, but on July, the new moon was on the 28th. Okay, so according to the Lunar Sabbatarians, July 28th was day one of the new month. Okay, according to some other calendars, some people will say that's day zero. Okay, some other calendars just count that as a blank day. But like I said in my last video, every day counts, right? So July 28th was a new moon, which was day one. So that means that the Sabbath fell on the 3rd, okay, on August 3rd. So that means that the Sabbaths for August all fell on Thursday. So you see that highlighted there on the 10th and the 17th. The problem that you run into now here is this. So if the Sabbath is supposed to be every seventh day, as it says, work six days and rest the seventh. Well, you've been resting the 10th and then you work. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Your week is only six days long. Well, aren't you supposed to rest on the seventh? No, because your week starts over again. Day one on the new moon on the 16th. So you didn't get a seventh day that week. Huh. Okay. So, so you have to keep working <laughs> until the Sabbath. Does that make sense? So your Sabbath is going to be more or less than seven days following the false doctrine of the lunar Sabbatarians. You see that? So it, it, people also go, oh, but this is the, the Gregorian calendar. You're following a pagan calendar. Well, guess what? Yes, the calendar, even, even when you go back to the Hebrews and stuff like that, it's, it's a pagan calendar. It is. Because Satan has overwritten the sacred names of Yahuwah. He has overwritten everything. He has changed everything. So just because it has a pagan name doesn't mean that we're worshiping a pagan day. I still call it the first day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day, the fifth day, the sixth day, and the Sabbath day when I'm talking with other brethren. But as far as functioning in the world, then I do call it Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay? But that doesn't mean that Yahuwah didn't make them all. Okay? I understand there is deception. However, 
if you're going to keep following this Lunar Sabbatarians calendar, their way of tracking the months and the weeks and the Sabbaths all together as they're not supposed to be mixed together, um, then all of a sudden in October, and you can do your homework too, in October, you're going to be walking into celebrating your or keeping the Sabbath on a Sunday, which the Roman Catholic Church said in 321 AD that, yeah, that's our day. That's our mark of authority. So hmm, if you're going to be worshiping on a pagan, a pagan day again, so, so that would be Sunday. Oh, but wait, you are also worshiping on Thursday, which is another pagan day name day um hmm. you can't get away from it bottom line you can't get away from it and it's really kind of ridiculous to keep playing these kind of semantics because right here in exodus 34 it is absolutely clear you have said you are to labor six days but you must rest on the seventh day you must rest on the seventh day labor six days and rest on the seventh he has sent it before he created the earth go read jubilees 2 Go read Jubilees too, okay? And we know, we know, like people will start really getting picky about what is a day. Aren't there 12 hours in a day? Yahusha answered, yes, they are 12 hours in a day. But we also see in creation that the evening and the morning were the first day. The two were together. So there's 12 hours in the evening and 12 hours during the day. And that is a full day. That is what it's called. A full day is evening and morning. And that's a day right? But according to the Lunar Sabbatarian's misinterpretation of scripture, the first creation week was 11 days long, starting from when the sun, moon, and stars were created on day four, because you have, if he had to work on the first day, work six days and rest the seventh, he had to work for 11 days, break his own law, Yahuwah had to break his own law, which destroys Jubilees 2.30, because it says Yahuwah kept the Sabbath with his angels in heaven. Um, and then it also destroys the rest of biblical prophecy. Because we know the sacred significance of the number seven as perfection. So the lunar Sabbatarian's misinterpretation of scripture completely destroys the divine completion of the number seven. And Yahuwah, and saying that Yahuwah broke his own law. Think on that. 